Uh, greetings and welcome to another Bible study. Uh, this time my uh, Bible study will be on the topic of the new man versus the old man. Um, because, you know, when you become a Christian, you, you, you have two natures within you. You still have your old flesh nature, but now you have the Holy Spirit. So, um, you know, those are two opposites. So that's why, um, you know, that's why some Christians that don't really use the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, within them to change, they start, they don't really change much. And that's why, you know, some people wonder, well, well this person's a Christian. Why are they still acting bad and sinful? It's because your, your flesh nature never disappeared. If you don't actively try to get closer to the Lord and do right and put an effort, then you're not going to change. You are going to become like, I mean, you're, you're going to, you're, you're going to stay the old way that you were. You are not going to change and become a new person. So now you have the Holy Spirit. You have the power to become a new person and change. But you, 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 you have to, you know, you have to, you're going to have to put an effort for that. It's, it's not just going to, it doesn't always magically happen. Like, I mean, I've heard plenty of stories, like some guys, you know, or some people say like, oh, I used to do drugs and drink and smoke, and then I got saved, and all of a sudden, um, I just stopped desiring those things. Like, yeah, that, that's great, but I'm like, you know, sometimes God does that. He really helps people out. Like, he, he kind of, you know, he helps you out, obviously. But um, that, that's not always the case. It, it doesn't always happen. And um, some people just have these, extreme, you, know, you know, very exciting, ex you know, interesting, extreme stories. But um, for the average Christian, it, it doesn't always work like that. You know, your, uh, your addiction problems aren't going to magically disappear overnight. Um, you know, if you go back to the old ways, you will become like the way you used to be. You, you will, um, you, you know, it's, it's still easy. You know, you can still fall back into the old sins. And even if you are away from the old lifestyle for a while, it doesn't mean that you're immune from falling back into it. You're, you're not immune. As long as you are in the flesh, as long as you're human, uh, there will always be the possibility for you to fall in sin and potentially even become worse than you were before you got sick. I mean, even, um, yeah, just being a Christian, it's not, it's not a guarantee. There are plenty of Christians, strong Christians, uh, leaders in the church, pastors have fallen for any kind of sin. It doesn't matter what it is. You, you name it, a Christian has done it. A Christian can fall into any kind of sin that a non-Christian can fall into. You are not immune from it. It's, it's possible. It's still possible to fall into those, you know, to that old behavior. So that's why you have to be very um, alert, very prepared. Uh, so that, anyway, that, this is what the, you know, the Bible study is about. It's about the old man versus the new man. And I'm going to have some verses talking about that. Have that, that duality you know, of, of uh, inside us. You know, you have the, you have the, the good and the bad. Uh, <clears throat> so my first verse is going to be 2 Timothy chapter 2. So 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. Uh, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So, <clears throat> um, so within you, you know, you have. Uh, so this is not talking about like various people. It's actually referring to just one person. So in within you, you have the wood and the earth, and then you have the gold and the silver. So the wood and the earth, that's like that stuff that burns easily. And I'll talk more about that about how your your works are going to get you know tried at the judgment seat of Christ. So the wood and the earth, that represents um, weak materials that uh, are going to burn. They're uh, materials of, of flesh. You know, it's going to burn. It's, it's, nothing's good that's going to come out of it. But then you have the gold and the silver. So what you want, you want the gold and the silver. You want good things in your vessel. So you want to purge yourself of bad things, of bad habits, uh, sins, uh, because these things are going to weigh you down. Uh, yeah, you can still be a Christian and have, uh, you know, 
problems. You know, no one's perfect. But these problems, these sins, bad habits, they're going to weigh you down. They're going to prevent you from living the life that God wants you to live. They're going to hold you back. And these bad habits are going to take up your time. They're going to take up your, uh, your mind. There's going to be problem. you know, you're going to, uh, they're, they're, not, they're not just going to take up like time, but they're also going to take up your mind and weaken you and prevent you from just functioning properly. Um, so this is a problem. So you want to purge yourself of, of the bad, of the evil and keep the good. And then you will be a vessel unto honor. And you will have so much more strength than you ever thought possible. You'll, you'll be able to accomplish things that you never thought you could accomplish. But you need to purge yourself of that, of that, that is evil. Uh, if man purges himself from these, he shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared for unto every good work. So if you purge yourself from this, from the sin, then you will be meet to be used by God. And God can use you for his purposes. So, you know, that's why it's important to, you know, start your day with prayer, confession of sins, reading the Bible. Um, you want to have a good start to the day. You want you to start your day on the right foot. That way you can make the proper decisions throughout the day and, you know, limit the chances of you falling into sin. So if you start your day on the right foot, then you will do well. You'll be successful. You'll be able to serve the Lord. But you need to start your day on the right foot. So, anyway, so I mean, I think it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, so yeah, because it's important. It's important to have that right foundation. You want to start your day on the right foot with the right foundation. Uh, let's see. My next verse, First uh, Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three. Uh, now, First Corinthians chapter three. This is a passage I have used in another video before. Um, I like, I really like this passage. There's so much to say here. Uh, and I think it also goes along with this topic about purging your body from the stuff that isn't good. So th this is a good eternal security passage about salvation. It also shows how you will be judged uh, at the judgment seat of Christ at the end of your life for the life that you lived. Uh, you know, if you're a Christian, this, this is the judgment for a Christian. This is how a Christian gets judged before God. Uh, so 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. And yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to end it there. So, um, so like normally, you know, when I look at this passage, uh, this is I'm normally telling, you know, non-Christians, or, or Christians about uh, how, you know, you can't lose your salvation and how your, uh, your works are going to get tried before the Lord. So this is, I mean, yeah, this is a judgment for four Christians specifically. And so if you look at it in verse, was it verse 12? Yeah. Verse 12 showed, like, well, first of all, yeah, let's go back. So first of all, verse 11. Verse 11, verse 11 shows that your foundation is Jesus Christ. So before you can do anything else, your foundation needs to be Jesus Christ. You need to be saved and you need to have your sins confessed all of that like that's that's you know um in order to progress you need to have that proper foundation jesus christ nothing else matters if you're not saved if you've never trusted in jesus christ as a savior uh, then you're just functioning on willpower and willpower and good deeds don't mean anything without jesus christ um, without having those sins wiped away and covered by jesus christ it means nothing. Your your person, your works are as filthy rags. That's what the Bible says about your works. That they're filthy rags. So without Jesus Christ, <coughs> you, you cannot actually do anything that's good. Um, you might think it's good. People around you might think it's good, but before God's eyes, it is not good because you 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 need to be you need to have those sins covered before you can actually do anything that's good. 
Every man's work shall be manifest. So have, know if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. So you want the gold, the silver, and the precious stones. So you you, you want the good stuff, you know, uh, serving the Lord, doing good, de you know, good works. Now, wood, hay, stubble, that's the, f that, that, that's the flesh. So you, you don't want the wood, hay, and the stubble. That stuff's going to burn. Yeah, you're not going to get any eternal reward for the wood, hay, and the stubble. That is what you don't want. That is what you want to purge your body of. You want to purge your body of those vessels that bring dishonor. You want the honorable vessels. And yeah, so that's it. Um, so the, the fire is going to try your works. So yeah, you're saved. You know, you're, you're Christian. You know, if you trust in Jesus Christ, you're saved. You're, you're, you're saved regardless. You're saved regardless. Even if your house is all wood and hay and everything burns, um, you know, your, your soul is still saved, but, um, that's not ideal. It's not ideal to stand before the Lord, knowing that you've been, um, for lack of a better word, uh, you've been a failure your whole life, you know, like that's not ideal. That is not the ideal situation you want to be in when you stand before God that you have, uh, wasted, squandered your whole entire life, um, Everything God's given you, you've just wasted it. Uh, your time, your resources, your wealth, everything was just spent wastefully, selfishly. That is not the condition you want to be in before when you stand before God. You, you want to stand before God at the end of your life uh, knowing that you've done right, knowing you've done what you could for the Lord. And yeah, you'll, you're going to mess up. You're not going to be perfect, but you, you want to put in, you know, you want, you want to put in that effort because you, you are going to be, uh, you are going to be rewarded for that. So, um, so yeah, any, so this, this duality just shows that inside your body, you're going to have the bad and you know, you're going to have the, the wood, hay, stubble, but you're also going to have the gold, silver, precious stones. And you want to get more of the, the good stuff and less of the bad stuff, but there will be that duality within you because you are still you know, a fleshly vessel. So, let's see, let's look at my next verse. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Yeah, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, actually. Let me check first. Do I, is there anything else I want to say here? Um, no, no, that's it. Okay, let's move on. So, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Uh, so first, uh, yeah, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So yeah, this is a very important verse. Um and I pray, God, your whole spirit, so spirit and soul and body. So you have three parts. Now, this is a very important fact. Like, the, like if you understand this, this actually helps you understand certain Bible doctrines that people normally wouldn't understand. Uh, you have three parts to you. You have a body, you have a soul, and you have a spirit. And all these things can be defined. Um, Dr. Ruckman uh has a good book on it called Body, Soul, and Spirit. It's like a pamphlet, pretty short. Um, and yeah, this is a very important doctrine, actually. If you understand, like I said, if you understand it, it helps you understand, like, what are you and kind of how salvation works and a lot of other things. Like, I'm going to be going a little off topic here, but I do think this is kind of an important point. Um, you have a body, you have a soul, and you have a spirit. So when you get saved, when you become a Christian, um, your body is not what gets saved. Your body is flesh. So everybody understands what the body is like that. This this is the body. This is your physical body. Um, this is this body is gonna die one day. It's gonna go to the grave. Um, I guess unless you get raptured out. I you know there's different theories on that. But normally everybody dies. That's that's just that's just the norm unless you get magically raptured up like Enoch or Elijah. Um, you know that that that's the norm, and so this body dies, it's flesh. It's not gonna last forever. Your body isn't what gets saved. So your body still stays fleshly, it still has a sinful nature. Even if you, when you become a Christian, you get saved, your, your flesh is not what gets saved. What gets saved 
is your soul. Your soul is actually what gets saved, not, not your body. Your body isn't what gets saved. Your soul is what gets saved. So your soul, when you're not, when you're not a Christian, your soul is actually dead. And when you get saved, when you become a Christian, your soul becomes alive. So now your soul is alive. And when you go to heaven, it's your soul that's actually going to go to heaven. Um, and so this, and this is what's eternal. And your eternal soul is going to either spend its time in heaven or in hell. But it will never die. Your soul is, is, is the eternal part of you. It's, it's not your body. You will get a new body one day, a spiritual body. Um, I, I don't know all the details, you know. I have We only know what's in the Bible, and we can only make some, uh, you know, educated guesses about some of these things. But, you know, th that's what's going to happen. You're going to have, a, you're gonna have a, um, a spiritual body in heaven. So, so, so everybody understands the body, but now the soul and the spirit, that's a little more complex. Um, it's a little harder to explain what that is. And a lot of times people just get soul and spirit mixed up. They just kind of use them uh, interchangeably, what soul and spirit are. And um, now soul, it's like, um, I mean, like, you know, if you, if you read the book by Dr. Ruckman, the way he explains it is that the soul is sort of like, it's, it has the same shape as your body, but it's, um, it's, in, it's, it's, it's inside of you. It has the same the, the same form of uh, as your body, but but you can't see it. You can't see the soul or the spirit. So that that it's sort of like basically like like a ghost, like how it's explained, like in Casper or something. Like I, I guess I think that was the explanation that was made. That this is similar to what a soul would look like. Um, so that's a soul. Now the spirit. Now spirit's a little harder to explain. Um, it's it's like it's not very it's it's basically what's inside the soul and the spirit is actually what God gives you, um, so you know it's God breathed, so when God breathes, um, like I think yeah he breathed into Adam, his you know his spirit and so God's spirit is within us so the only way we're the only reason we're functioning and we're alive is because we have God's spirit within us, and there's different types of spirits so you know we have the human spirit you know. Uh, you know, animals have their own spirit. They're, it's different because, you know, they're, they're animals. Obviously, they're, they're, they're not like us. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a little harder to explain the, you know, soul and spirit there. But the soul and the spirit, those are, those are the eternal parts. Those are eternal. The flesh is what's not eternal. And what gets saved is your soul. Your soul is what's, what, is what gets saved. So the Bible actually talks about uh, something called spiritual circumcision. And people just gloss over that. They don't even know what that means. Like, what is this spiritual circumcision? And what it is, it's, it's like, the Bible actually talks about this in the New Testament. It's literally, what happens is, like, is that soul and spirit get cut away from the flesh. Because your soul is stuck to your flesh normally. And when you're saved, and then your soul and your spirit get cut away from that. So when your flesh dies, your soul and your spirit aren't stuck to that flesh anymore. They are actually able to go up to heaven. Under normal circumstances, if you're if you're not saved, then your soul and your spirit, you know, they're, they're just stuck to your flesh. They they die like they're pretty much gone. They die with the flesh. And so, if you're saved, then your soul is like literally cut away from the flesh, and it goes up to heaven when you die. So yeah, so I don't have you know, um, it's probably better if you just read the book. I'm just kind of summarizing things here. Um, but yeah, you, you can research that topic: body, soul, and spirit. It's pretty interesting, and it kind of um, allows you to understand things that most people wouldn't really understand or think about, uh, but, you know, how salvation works, like, uh, you know, your salvation, you know, your eternal, you can't lose it now because your body and your soul are not connected. That's why you're able to be saved. If your body and your soul are connected, then your soul stuck to your body, and you aren't, you aren't going to heaven, or you're going to hell, because... Your, your body dies, your body, your soul goes down with the body. So when you're saved, your soul is separated from your body and your soul is able to go up to heaven. So very important, very important point here. And um, so, yeah, anyway, this flesh and this soul and the spirit, you know, they fight. So yeah, actually what, what, what's fighting is the flesh and the Holy Spirit. That's what's fighting. If you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit within you and it's going to be fighting the flesh. The flesh is going to try to do sin and evil, and the Holy Spirit 
is going to fight that. It's going it's, to, it's, it's that part of you. It's, it's like, it's going to be like your conscience is going to be telling you that you're doing something wrong. So this is, this, once again, this is where you're getting your two natures, your two natures. You have your old flesh nature, but now you have the Holy Spirit that's going to fight it. And if you listen to the flesh, the flesh is going to get stronger. If you listen to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's going to get stronger. So a lot of people, they, they just listen to their flesh. And then their Holy Spirit just gets weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. It's still there. The Holy Spirit doesn't die. It's still there. It's within you. But you could, you, if you've been sinning for so long, well, you might have silenced that voice. You might have silenced your conscience. You might have silenced your Holy Spirit where you can't hear its voice anymore. You can't hear God's voice anymore because you have been disobeying the Lord for so long that your, your mind's just all messed up. And you're just not listening to the Holy Spirit anymore. But if you do right, if you do what God tells you to do, then you're gonna, you're gonna, your mind's gonna change. You're gonna renew your mind, like it talks about in Romans 12. You want to renew your mind and to think properly, and then you're gonna to start listening to the Holy Spirit, and the flesh is gonna get weaker, and you'll start doing the right things. So that's First Thessalonians 5:23. Um, let's see. Let's see. Mercy yeah, I think I'm gonna cut it off here because, um, yeah, I think I think I have enough for one more one more video. I'll cut it off here, and we'll, we'll, I'll I'll finish this up probably one more video. This topic of the new man versus the old man. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll see you next time.